Hello everyone. Welcome. Uh, let's get this started. Oh, I forgot to set up my editor and this one as well. Okay. Hello, Marcel. How are you doing today? Welcome, guys. Leaving soon for a walk, but I can catch the start of your stream. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, this is going to be a long one. Uh, I'm planning to stream for at least three hours uh, because I want to get this done today. I'm fine, thank you. I've been working on Rumi last night on my own uh, without streaming it, and I've got a lot done actually. This program, well, this program works, and I'm going to add this part in today's stream. Uh, okay. I see some people have joined in. Um, right, so <clears throat> let's just jump to it. And guys, feel free to chat. Uh, this is not a, you know, you, you are, this is your stream. Do whatever you want, share projects. I'm more than happy to look at them and we can um, talk about everything. So just a quick update. Um, I added a stream schedule. Uh, you should see it on the Twitch page, I hope. I'm, I'm not that good at Twitch, so I'm not sure if this is currently working or not. But I added a, Twitch a, a stream schedule, and I'm going to update it, you know, or try to update it. Okay, Marcel says he can say it. That's great. Right. So, um, yeah, let's just start. So, in the last stream, we talked about adding pointers, and we implemented the pointer types. So, for example, this is a pointer to integer, and uh, we implemented this one. And if I run the code, we can see that it is being allocated as an as a pointer, right? As opposed to a normal uh, integer. And we can even do something like star star. So it would be a pointer to a pointer, and this should also work. In theory, yeah, it does work. So uh, we did do that. The code that is generating works. We also implemented, uh, well, I also implemented this on my own last night uh, so that we can get a reference to a variable, basically store it inside a pointer. And you can see that that works as well. So we are storing the variable i inside the pointer. Not the variable, the location of variable i. There's a difference. And um, what I'm going to do in this stream, I'm hoping to uh, implement assigning to a pointer. Right? So uh, just a reminder, you can access things uh, here. Uh, Rumi and Rumi blank. I hope so. Redux. Uh, what was the command name? Uh, stream apps. That's the one, right? Okay, it's Redux. So you can you can access the things there if you want to. Yeah, and. Uh, the code is there. Feel free to uh, look at it and do anything you want with it. Uh, but I'm going to keep working on this, and hopefully, we should see some good things happen by the end of the stream. Right. So the way we have to work with this is well, we have to parse this expression, and you know, as you know, we do that by creating parsers in Rumi. So I'm going to create a parser, and we're going to call it ptr assign. And ptr assign is very similar to assign, so I'm even going to steal the code for that one. Right. So we have a pointer assign. Uh, I wish I, I I named it pointer assign parser. Uh, I can move that. Okay. 
pointer assign pointer assign parser dot header. Close this one and open pointer assign. Right. So we have a pointer assign parser. Uh, inside of it, it has a value parser, right, and an expression parser. A symbol parser for the equal sign and a symbol parser for the star sign. And we don't have the ID parser anymore. So let's do this. Right. And we're just gonna we're just going to uh, write the code because that's Relatively straightforward. Pointer assign parser dot c plus uh, plus. You know the drill by now. Okay. So in the constructor, we have to initialize our symbol parsers and tell them what symbols they should be looking for. And the ESP should look for. Uh, let's include the symbols file. ESP should look for symbol equal and SSP should look for symbol star uh, or is it malt? Malt, okay. That's bad naming, but for now we can just keep going with that. They actually didn't find the code, even the redesign branch had it lots of days five months ago. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, you're right. I am going to set the limit for it right now. In that case, um, now I have so many scripts set up on my machine that I assume that it is just going to work, but apparently not. So, git remote add origin this one. And git push, don't push to master, we want to push to um, C only. Uh, let me just quickly see what this means. Um, da, da, da. Wait, what? This should work, right? You take out dash this, hear me, and then... Sure. You can try that. Take out dash D, not D. I know. Um, and then git push dash U origin, see me. We can try that. I don't think that is, this is going to work because... Oh, it did work. Sorry, never mind. Right. So... The code is in branch C Rumi. Yes. Uh, we are missing the readme file in it. Okay, we can work on that later. The code is there. We can use CMake to build it for yourself if you're interested. Mm -hmm. And this is updated four hours ago, so that's good. Yeah. Dash B uh, is for creating branches. Dash D, I, I think. Um, I don't remember what dash D does. Dash D is detach. Okay. Okay, glad that we solved that. Right. So the pointer assign parser reinitialize it. Like so. And we can just write the scheme function for it. So scheme functions are recursively built things in our parser. Enter assign parser scheme. That you know they just 
pass their values to things that are smaller than them. For example, you parse a symbol, then you parse an expression, you parse the equal sign, you know, things like that. And this is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to start by looking at the star symbol. No, no, that's that's fine. Don't apologize, Brad. Uh, it happens to the best of us. Right, so um, we are going to capture the, the star symbol passing in the arguments. And after that, we expect to see an expression. Then we expect to see the equal sign, then a value. Right? So that's all the pointer assign parser has to do. You know, aside from actually storing those values, that's all it has to do. But we just want to see the program getting parsed first. So you're not going to worry about the other things. Let's include it in here, pointer assign parser. And this is an statement. We can, um, yeah, let's add it here. Register statement, new pointer, sign parser. Right. Now we have to regenerate the CMake and then recompile everything. Right. So, so this should allow us to actually comp uh, parse the code, but the code generation is going to throw an error. Well, let's see. Um, a statement token was not a real statement, so it did parse it, but it doesn't know how to convert it to an AST. Okay, yeah, you can see we parsed the star, we parsed the pointer, equal, and three. So that's exactly this one. Uh, or is it? Yeah, it is. Great. So, um, right. Now we, we need to store the value. By the way, is the size of the text okay for you guys, or should I need to increase it or decrease it? I tried looking uh, on, a, on it at my phone, and I think this is okay, but you know, do let me know if you can't see it or if it's too, too big. I'd have, I, I would be happy to change it. Okay, so here we have two tokens. We have the pointer token and we have the value. And we need to have a constructor. For me, it's a big enough, but I'm using a 27 inch screen. So please ask again for someone else's cabin. Yeah, people don't tend to chat. Like there are uh, two just telling me there are eight people watching, but no one seems to like to chat here. Um, okay, that's okay. Right, so the constructor should capture cc source, the starting position and end position. That's the standard for all of our tokens. In addition to that, we have the pointer and the value here, right? And again, that's easy to implement. So Pointer assign token, pointer assign token. Hello, Crazy Phantom. Welcome to the stream. How have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. Right, ending position. And I also need to include the pointer and the token value. We are working on implementing uh pointer assignment in Rumi. Right. So pointer should go to pointer and value should go to value. Aside from that, we will also store the context, the source and the starting position and the end position. I was using the university exam. Okay, hopefully you had a good exam. What are we going to do this time? We are working on pointer assignments. So 
uh, in the previous streams, we implemented pointer types. So this is a valid operation, but this is not. So we are working on implementing this. How was your exam? Did you have a good one? So let's also override the description model method. Steady string. And to assign token, describe, return. So, so what are we going to return? We are going to return exactly what we first. That is the start token plus the pointer's description plus equal so and plus value. Example is a good way to first find out. Yeah. Hopefully you like it. Okay, so this is our pointer uh, assigned token. And now we have to initialize this based on the result of our parsing. So we will look at the parser. If the parser wasn't successful, we will just return the failure. But if it was successful, we are going to return a parse result with a new pointer assigned token. So. Uh, we have to give it a pointer, a value, cc source, and the starting position and the ending position, right? So how do we get the pointer and value? Well, we have them in this variable somewhere. I'm just going to extract them. Right. So. This is the uh, star symbol, so we can ignore it. This is the uh, pointer, so we are going to capture that in temp, and then ant is going to be temp followed by the rest of it. Right, so pointer would be the second member of this tuple. And value would be the last member of the and tuple. And stop token t two. Right. So this should work at this point, and we should get a you know a better output than this. Let's try it out. And we do. We get the star id pointer equals three why is it equal three yeah because i put three there okay so this is working now all we have to do is provide a two ast function for this one for which we can uh just write it like this two ast cc cc and i assume that you're working with pointer assign token like so now uh, you are going to return a pointer assign and uh, with two expression stars, you convert your pointer to an AST and you also convert your value to AST. So this is uh, what we want to do. Uh, it is complaining at this point because it doesn't know uh, what pointer assign is. And, you know, we haven't defined pointer assign at all, so we have to go and do that. But uh, I'm just going to include an imaginary pointer assign here so that it knows what we are working with. Right. Now, in the AST, uh, we will create the pointer assign header. This is an expression. So pointer assign uh, like that with the public expression. Right. So you have a constructor 
that accepts two expression, a pointer expression and a value expression. So this shouldn't complain anymore. It's updated and uh, it is still complaining. What seems to be the problem? Oh, uh, we didn't define it in the header file, right? Virtual ASD star to ASD CC CC override. There you go. Still complaining. Uh, what's your problem? No problem. Okay. So let's close that and close this one. So we just have to implement how the pointer assigned works. Okay. So the pointer assigned is like any other expression. So I'm just gonna look at, oh wait, it's not an expression, it's in a statement. Yeah, pointer assigned is in a statement, not an expression. And we have to include, statement yeah so let's look at if and see how we did it there so we have to implement these three methods we will do those and let's declare this is a c plus plus file for the color scheme okay now i am going to write it like this so let me store the values in memory Good for you. Computer architecture, that's uh, that's nice. Okay. All right, so we are going to write this one. Enter assign the header included. Have a great work, Marcel. Uh, hopefully you can join us again afterwards. So, the constructor is just assigning the pointer and the value, right? Just like that. And we don't need anybody, right? So pointer assign should basically look inside of the pointer and store the value there, right? So how do we prepare compile and code gen? Well, for prepare, I think it's suffice to say that we need to do pointer dot prepare and uh, also value prepare. We might want to check types here, but we are not now. Um, next, we are going to do compile, which is the same thing, only we call the compile function. Right? Now, code gen is a little bit more complex, and we have to think about what we are going to do. So, okay. So, basically, um, Ideally, the pointer has the correct type, and I I've ignored the type for now, but you know we have to check it uh, at a later time. So yeah, so we we should generate the code for pointer. We should generate the code for value, and then load the pointer and store the results of the value inside the load. So there should be an additional load statement. But just to make sure that I'm not talking nonsense, I am going to test a C, open a C test file. Let's delete that. Right. So uh, we want to basically do int a star int a and int a star pointer, which is pointing to a. 
and we want to say star pointer should be three. This is the code that we want to generate, right? So, um, right. So let's compile that git clang and open the result and see how they handle it. So, yeah, they basically load the pointer and store the result to store the value to result of the load you can see so that's exactly what we're going to do so i'm going to say auto p would be ptr expression generator and auto v would be ptr expression generation again uh just to be safe Let's do it like that and like so. Oh, come on. Right. So, um, include base and include LLVM context. Right. So we have to load the pointer. So P would be, uh, Create load, load P, and then create a store. A store. And first we have the value, then the pointer. So this should be the code. Like this is all of the code. Let's regenerate our field function and recompile and see if this is actually working or not. And um, yeah, so if it works, we are, we are halfway there with our pointer operations. And okay, so what happened there was we, let's have the code next, it's a screen. That is right. So we, uh, we introduce i, we store zero inside of it, that's fine. We introduce pointer, we store i inside of that. Then uh, we load pointer twice. Huh. Uh, I can watch a 1080p video on YouTube without any problem, but cannot watch 17 on Twitch. And so you keep pausing. Is that Twitch or for my, my internet connection? Are you using any uh, proxy servers or VPN? Because that affects Twitch, I think. Maybe you try without uh, any of those. Right. Okay, so uh, the thing that I'm seeing is that it's, it is a story in the pointer to itself, which is not what we want. So I have probably made a mistake somewhere. Yeah, the problem is that this should be value, not pointer. So let's regenerate that. There we go. So compile again. Right. So load the pointer once, load it again, store the result, which is three to the loaded item. And then that's it. Right. So compile that and run. Uh, sorry. Okay. We get a segmentation. Okay. That's unexpected, but you know, we can. Probably figure out why. So, I'm guessing maybe maybe we don't need the extra load because we are EXPR generating, not alloca generating. So, that could be it. But let's see if it actually works. Yes, I have VPS and run a wire guard server on that and use the VPN for both YouTube and. 
So I'm not sure if you if you can try and uh, connect without a VPN for Twitch or you know make a rule that you can bypass the VPN, something like that. Uh, if the problem persists, because a few other people have mentioned this as well, we might switch to, well, not switch, but a stream at the same time to YouTube too. Uh, right, so this actually worked. Uh, I'm seeing three here, so this was correct. I don't know, feel free to talk about anything. This is your stream too. Right, so um, that's fine. I'm going to commit linker assign and I'm going to push there. Right. Okay. Next, we want to be able to access the value of a pointer at any point that we want. So uh, we should be able to say uh, print int a star pointer. So this should also be a valid operation. And we are just going to parse that and run it. That, that's just a, an extra load. So it's not that hard to deal with. But you know, we, we have to write the, the parser and everything for it. So at the point at this point it cannot parse it, it not parse what at, at that index. So again we have to create a parser for it and do everything that we did. So what should we name the parser? It is going to be pointer value that header, and we are including. Uh, you know what? Pointer value parser that header. Now that's the correct file name. Um, copy everything from pointer assign here, and we can modify what we want. So we don't care about that for now. We have pointer value parser, and for pointer value, we Uh, it should be pointer value, right? So we don't care about uh, the equal sign, so let's get rid of, rid of that. We don't care about the value, we just want the star and the expression. Okay, have a good day, Phantom. See you soon. All right, so that's the parser. The definition of the parser, at least, and we can create the implementation here. Right. So, uh, how should we implement it? We should first create the constructor. It looks something like this, and Basically, say that with a symbol parser that you're looking for a multiplication symbol. Let's also include the symbols. Right. So that's the constructor. Now, as for the uh, part, uh, the actual uh, multiply. Right. As for the actual scheme. Parse result pointer value parser should look something like this. Right, so we want to capture the star and then you want to capture the expression. Right, and that's that's everything. Uh, the other way, but right. so that's everything for the pointer value parser. 
Okay, let's register it with our parser. Uh, that's CPP. So include it. Pointer value parser. Uh, right. Include that and we add it here after our binary operations. Or, you know, we can even place it at the end. Right. So register expression rule new pointer value parser and we make we generate CMake for us, we compile, and this should give us um this should parse the code for us, but it should produce an error when compiling, right? Yes, so it's did it parse it actually? Yeah, it did parse it, but it doesn't know how to compile it, which is expected. So to do that, we have to create a token for it. Uh, here, pointer value token is a public token. So what do we have? We have a constructor again that accepts a token expression, a CC, a source, the starting position and the end position. So that's that. We can quickly write the constructor here. So pointer value token like so, right. Uh, I want to be able to say capture the expression for yourself and then the rest is like this. I really should create a macro for all of these uh, thingies. And you need to also have your token. Right? So we don't get the error there. And then we need to have our describe method, which is a std string, and we are overriding it. This is a C file. Right. So, how do you want to describe it? Thank you, ZeroSum, for following me on Twitch. I appreciate it. How are you doing? Feel free to talk about anything here. This is a friendly stream. Not you know you don't you don't need to worry about anything. Just feel free to talk. Right. So, uh, pointer value. I'm just gonna add a star to the beginning of description of whatever exp has. Right. And this is again, we don't need to worry about performance here because this is only used in debug and it's okay. Where um, whenever the, the it actually matters to have a good performance, we use a string builders or we uh, initialize the whole string at once. Okay, so now we should get a prettier print for our pointer value parser, but we will still get a build error, right? So here uh, at the moment we are getting something like this. And now, oh, right. It didn't work because we are still returning the same thing. So we have to capture it. Do you have a YouTube channel where you upload your recordings? I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, it is available in the, so if you go to here, I'm going to show you just a second. If you go to the Twitch page, the link should be mute. The link should be here. That's my YouTube page. I guess I can I can add a command here for YouTube. 
uh, YouTube command. So it would be this link. There you go. Okay. Right, right. So, uh, so if if this failed for whatever reason, return the failure. But if it didn't fail, we want to return a new parse result. Thanks, gotta go. We'll check it on YouTube. Thank you. Uh, you can also check the video on demand here on Twitch if you don't do YouTube for whatever reason. Thank you for joining us, Zero Time. Looking forward to seeing you later. Right, so the parse results. Uh, we need to create a pointer value token, uh, which we can get by doing this. So uh, we need to extract the expression from here. So and that token, the second part, right? And then we want to pass in CC source, the starting position, we can get that from ants again, and the end position, which we get from ants again. Right, so now we should get a pretty print instead of the, the thing that we had before. So instead of this one, we should get a pretty print of what a pointer access looks like. So we do get a pretty print. Right, now for code generation, we have to convert this to an AST. AST pointer value token to AST. So you get the compiler context and you're allowed to use that. But we are just going to say, this is a pointer value. And I am passing you an expression AST. And let's include the imaginary pointer value file that we haven't implemented yet, like so. And let's register this in our header file, which is over here. So virtual AST star to AST, you get a CC and you are overriding. That's that. And so that's everything for the parser. Now to implement the AST, we have to go here and create a pointer value header. Right. So let's just basically uh, load a the variable value because we're pretty similar to what we do over there. But we're just going to change the name to pointer value here as well. And we don't have an ID, instead we have an expression, ptr. We have an expression, ptr. Right, now we have to create all of these methods for pointer value. Which is going to be fun. Right. Uh, new pointer value, right. Okay, so let's go there, ASD pointer value.c++ and include pointer value.header. So let's start with the easier thing, which is the constructor. Expression, pointer, and just set it to your own pointer and you don't need anybody. Okay, now for the compile, and prepare, we are just going to call compile and prepare on the on the line type. So that would be pointer.compile and pointer.prepare. Right? So these are those two. Expression generation, that's really easy. Uh, we just have to generate the expression of pointer and then load it. Uh, yeah, load it once more. All right. So we capture it from here. Uh, pointer dot 
like so, and let's include base and LLVM context, like so. Right. So if we capture that, and then we tell LLVM to load it once more with load p. And this will, this will be how we generate the expression for a pointer value. We, we evaluate the pointer and then we load it once more, right? And uh, I guess we have to ensure the type is a pointer here. But I'm going to just uh, add a type checker and implement it like that later because uh, my mindset is fixed on the other ones here. Right, so how do we handle types? Well, we know that the underlying part, uh, the underlying thing is a pointer type. Uh, or is it pointer type? So, get the underlying type. Uh, include pointer type dot header right and return the inner type of whatever that is so like that uh use of one okay right we have to say pointer value right 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 so that's how we do the type and for alpha generation we just return uh this line we don't load it an extra time so void star pointer value alloca gen would be return pointer xpr gen. We don't need to load it extra because we are we want the location, the alloca of it, right? So that's that. I guess we can uh, do the type check here. So create a pointer type. Well, you know, we can just copy this line. But instead of a static cast, we are going to have a dynamic cast. And if there was, a, if it wasn't successful, just print and complain to the uh, to the user that accessing pointer value of a non pointer expression. Right, so that would be bad, and then exit forcefully. That's our type checking, and let's um, we generate CMake and we compile. So not everything in our test syntax should work, and we are going to. Uh, ensure that it does. Right. So compile. We get a segment fault. Okay. Why do we get a segment fault? Uh, in variable value type. Uh, so variable value type is as an invalid reader set it. that's in line 27 let's look at that source ast variable value line 27 so we are accessing the lookup okay so what's happening here we know for a fact that this exists because if it doesn't, the compile is going to complain. What does the lookup return? Uh, base dot header, I assume. Lookup returns a named, and this is becoming null for some reason. Uh, let's actually go here again. Right. So. It is possible for that to return zero. I'm not denying that, but I'm saying that if it is returning zero, uh, 
compile, we'll catch it. Right? And we've made sure to call compile before type everywhere. So let's let's see the, the track. So this is happening in pointer value prepare. Oh, 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 oh. I realized what I did wrong. Pointer value C++. So the type checking should be done in the compile uh, function, not the prepare function. Right. So because, you know, it is possible for something at this point to not have a type. Right? Yeah. That is totally possible. OK, uh, compile again. And it did compile. Just let's see if it is working correctly. So this is the code for accessing it. Uh, you can see we are loading it twice, which is what we should be doing. And let's see if it actually works. Yeah. So there you go. There's that. That's pointer access. Great. Uh, let's remove the valve grind core file and add everything else. I need this as pointer value. Push it. And how long have you been doing the stream? It's been 52 minutes and 33 seconds. OK, that's good. And do we know, um, you know, if you're interested, this is the repository. Feel free to check that out again. And the documentation for the language. We are on the C Rumi branch. Change your branch to this one, and you will see the same exact code that I have here. Right. So the next thing that I want to be able to uh, so, so far, this pointer is operating on the stack. And I want to basically say uh, this should be an MLO of size of int, like that. And I can define an MLO as something that gets an integer and returns a pointer to any right so so this code should compile at this point but i'm guessing that it's not going to compile because it doesn't know the any size and it doesn't know size of operation and we also have to pass that to starting text. right so probably this is going to give us an error and this is going to give us an error but let's just see and ensure, right, not supporting this time, that's for any. Uh, let's just quickly implement that, primitive type. Right, so when you're dealing with a pointer, right, so if the type is any, you wanna uh, basically return void. Uh, no, you want to return a U64. OK. So there's that. Uh, oh, if W is in right. Compile that and see if that works. OK. Right, uh, not supporting this, it's still, you, come on, seriously, so not supporting this type, uh, not, oh, could it be the parser, could it be the parser? This is a parser, okay. Where is any? Yeah, we had the any here, okay, sorry. We have to go to the AST file here, right? Yes, this is the file that we need to look at. So I am going to return the same thing for any as we are returning for uh, U64. 
And in the casting thing, we are doing the same thing. So case the any for now, you know, this has to be handled better. But I'm a bit lazy, so you know. Any is not signed. And it's mm, for casting purposes. So you have to implicitly cast any just like you do with int for all of the types. Okay. And uh, I guess we can say that it is an integer. So here also check to see if key is tn. Compile. Let's see what happens now. How's everyone doing? I see many names in chat, but not so many people are talking as usual. Okay. Right. So this time uh, you can see that malloc is being declared. I wish I declared as Q8 though. Uh, we can probably do that, right? We can do that here. So that takes care of that. And uh, this is fine. This is not fine. U8 here. And uh, it's still unsigned, so that's okay. Their yeah, implicit cast is fine. Okay. Compile that again. See if everything works. It probably does, right? Right. No compilation error. Let's compile that again. Yeah, it's I8, which is what I want to, to see. But uh, it cannot parse the size of operator. So let's uh, do that. Size of is another keyword that we have to define. So we have to go to the keyword parser. And uh, we have to go to the keywords file. Keywords. And define keyword size of. Right. So if the string was size of, you return new keyword token keyword k size of position and CCS keyword and keyword. Right. So should be fine. What did I spell wrong? Okay, this is a lowercase w. Right, so that's that. Uh, I guess we can do this one as well. Return size off. And yeah. So we added a new keyword to our language and now we are going to add a new parser and call it size of parser the header size of parser operates in a similar fashion to the pointer value except instead of relying on a value i guess yeah so you rely on a type and a type parser. And instead of relying on a symbol, you rely on a keyword. So uh, the token would be size of token. And you have a type. And you have a type here as well. 
and this is called size of token right and as for the parser uh we are going to call it size of parser with its own constructor you don't need an expression parser you need a oh. oops come on you need a keyword parser kp and a type parser tp so this is the header file at once and now we can go ahead and write size of parser c plus plus and we can do we can include this one All right so how do you want to deal with this well uh we know for a fact that the constructor for size of parser is only going to assign the keyword to here which is keyword size of and that's it we just need to include keyword.header right so how does the schema look like well the schema returns the parse results and uh, this is really repetitive coding but i mean it's just as uh, a subtle change that you have to handle every time and that's what makes it bearable <laughs> right so at this point i'm just going to say look for the keyword and then look for the type uh this would be parse ccs like so okay just going to double check everything it looks fine now we have to register that in our parser so include the size of parser that header and we know that it is an expression so register expression rule new size of parser right now let's regenerate cmake and recompile now we should be able to well we are compiling a lot of files because we changed the keywords so everything that relies on keyboards is going to be compiled again and now we can do this right and you can see uh the function called malloc has correctly parsed size off but it is not pretty printing it because we haven't defined the pretty print rule right so how can we deal with that well we should Go back to this one and we should return a size of token. So capture the result here. If they were invalid, return them, return the error. Otherwise, return a new, well, return a parse result capturing a new size of token that has type CCC. Okay, so type CC source and start token dot starting position and start token dot ending position so how do we get the type well token start type would be hands is a tuple token uh, a pointer to a tuple token and you want the second one there so this is going to uh, pretty printed for us uh, if we implement all of those functions, which we are going to do right now. So the constructor, the constructor is the easiest one. Uh, how long? Right. So I think we've been up for one hour. Right. Uh, let's do it until one hour and ten minutes. And I'm going to take a break. So that's our constructor. We get the token, we get the compile context, we also get the source, 
the starting position and the end position. Okay. So uh, don't forget to assign the type to the type. And the rest is like this. Uh, right. End position is end position. So that's how we do that. As for the AST, put on zero for now with a do statement. Like so, and as for the description, return size of plus whatever your type is. Okay, that should be doable, right? Let's see if it pretty friends. And it does size of in. That's exactly what we want to see. Okay, now for the AST, we assume there is a size of that gets a type star, which we can get from type to AST if we pass in CC. Right now, include our imaginary. AST slash size of header file like that, and that should be everything. Right, so uh, AST size of that header. This is really similar to a const int, so let's include that one. Just change the name to size of. Change the constructor name as well, and change this one to a type. We have an internal type like so and that should be our header file you also have to implement all of those files but you know most of them are just empty uh, let's fix that okay oh so there's a name clash here so i'm just gonna rename that to type underline and rename that to type Otherwise, we would have a name flash with the type here, right? So, um, let's open the AST file for size of, which includes size of the header, and we will start as always with the constructor is like so and you tell it to set the type underline from type underline and there is no nothing more that you need to do okay so there's that next we have to write all of our other things so the compile thing is just us calling compile on type Um, right, like that. Same goes for prefer. Right. As for the expression generator, we are going to call size. And I know size isn't a member, but we are going to define it right away after we do this. So what's our type? Our type, um, this should be a return and this should be a pointer like that. Right. Well, uh, no, this could be a number and we need to, uh, we need to cheat. Just give me a second to write the other function here. So let's look at the constant implementation. 
So we have to, this is a number, the size should return a number, and we have to call the const int on that. Like this one. And it is of size, oh, it is of size eight. And we don't have value, we have num. Let's also include uh, context and base so that we have access to those variables and that should be everything right so that's how we do the type uh, we do the expression generation so we look at the size of the type and then report that inside an uh, eight bit integer so what is our type then well, our type is a primitive type that has a type on sign 8. How do we generate Alica? We don't. We're, we return an error if someone tries to write onto us. Okay, so, so this is how we, we want to deal with everything. Let's generate CMake. And now we have to define the size in our type. So we have a virtual int size that gets a CC and is empty by default. I am going to take a short break. Uh, I think we, yeah, we, yeah, we're past the one hour and 10 minute mark. I'm going to take a short minute and uh, sh short break and I'll be back in a minute.
Okay, so we're back. And yeah, so we have to implement the size for everything, basically. Right? And uh, this is going to be a long change because a lot of the different classes are going to break, basically. But, you know, that's just uh, the way things are. So, I think we have to update primitive type here and add an integer size like that. So, yeah. it is a virtual method and it is overriding. I should probably do that for all of the rest too, right? For now, okay. So we have that for primitive type. We also have that for pointer type. And what else do we have? Function type. Right? Yes. So we did that for all of, the, all of those. Uh, let's compile and see the errors, I guess. Right. Um, so, yeah, just a reminder, in case I cut the video from here, you can access the project code from this URL and uh, the language documentation from here. So there you have those. Feel free to check them out. Right. So, you probably got a thousand error here. Uh, we have one for the function type, one for um, yeah. No declaration matching void size up. What do you mean? Um, size of right, this would be type star, and this would be new from the type like that, right? <clears throat> so, compile that again. Right, we get undefined uh, instances for size of. So we are going to do that. So I don't exactly recall, but I think size of should work based on byte size. Uh, I'm just going to verify that for a second here. So let's look at, for example, uh, Maybe int type, right? So do we have a size function? We have a clone compatible display name type gen no size function. Okay, uh, maybe we should look at expression size of XPR and see how we handle that. So. We get data layout and get, oh, we don't. Okay, so, so we aren't really. Huh. We didn't need to do all of these things that we did. Uh, it was enough to just mention. Right. So let, me, let, me, let me backtrack what we did. So. Remove this from this file. Uh, no need to change that one. Remove it from this file. And also remove it from this one. Right. So the way we handled that was by looking at the data model. Right. So uh, data model is available at LLC. And so for the type, we do type gen 
type underline type gen. And this returns an LLVM type star. Right. That's that's way easier. Okay. So let's compile everything and see if it works. Do I need to divide this or multiply it by eight? No. So we are compiling everything and uh, we get an error. Num was not declared here. Uh, that's because we have size now. There you go. So will this work if I don't have a data layout? Let's find out. We are explicitly casting incompatible types. That is, any is being cast to int. Primitive um, types, db. Why is any an incompatible type? Could you tell me that? Well, any doesn't need to be here. It is implicit cast. So probably here, right? Explicitly casting incompatible types. So we are saying that. Oh, right, right, right. I forgot to do something. Um, pointers don't know how to cast to each other. Right? So whenever you want to cast the pointer to another pointer, it's going to say incompatible. But that's that's okay. So we're just saying so if you can uh, dynamically cast a type to your pointer type, return okay. And the way to do that is by calling XPR gen on CC. Pretty compile. Right. So this should this should take care of our problem. Mm. Embodies of incomplete type expression. What? Oh, I have to include expression here. Like so. Oh, I just dropped my phone. Okay, so no compilation error. Let's see if it works now. Right, so we are calling mloc, and everything seems to be working. So let's look at our code. Uh, we define malloc here. Uh, we call it for our pointer. We assign a number three to it, and then we print it. So this is um, pointer allocation on uh, in RAM, right? And now we should be able to compile it and run it, and we get zero for i. Right, because it's been assigned zero and you get three for our pointer. So that's okay. Let's let's compile that and add a size of that was a lot of work for a small thing. We change a lot of functions. Right. Let's push that. 
like so, and great. There we go. So that's size off. Uh, so now we have pointers, we have memory access, you know, we have all different kind of things. And we also have memory leaks here, so I'm just gonna um, define the free function, which gets a pointer to anything and returns a unit. And we are going to be the pointer. Like so, compile, compile, and run. Great. So uh, now we don't have any memory leak again, which is good. Right. So the next thing that we want to do, we want to start working with structs. I think we should either be structs or should be um, pointer arithmetic. So I don't know which one to tackle first. Maybe pointer arithmetic is, uh, you know. Let's work on pointer arithmetic. So assume that we define an array. Basically, this would be a pointer array of size 3. And we assign the first one a value of 0. And we assign the second one a value of 1. And the last one, a value of, we should be able to see those values. So I'm going to write every possible thing that I'm hoping to do. So, yeah. Right. And uh, so we should be able to say pointer. A parenthesis over there plus one. We should be able to say the location of pointer plus one. So let's do that plus ten. So we get a memory error if you're accessing something that doesn't exist at all, right? And this is going to give me all sort of errors now, especially because of these two operations and these ones. But uh, let's compile and see. So let's comment this one, comment this one, comment this one. This should work. At this stage, this should work, right? So does it work? No. Uh, I'm guessing, yeah. So you cannot parse the parentheses over there, uh, which we can deal with by adding the parser for it, right? So let's let's add the parenthesis parser. So parser, I'm going to say parent parser that header. So we are basically uh, very similar to a pointer value parser, right? In that we have a symbol and an expression. We have a parent token. We have a parent parser here and here. So we have two, we have one expression parser and we have two symbol parser. Left parent symbol parser and right parenthesis symbol parser, like that. So this is our parser file. Let's register it with the parser.c++, so we come here, we include it, parent parser.header, include it here, I guess, register uh, expression rule, new parent parser, right? like that and now we can actually implement it so parent parent parser.cpp so what does this file oh what does this file look like it includes the definition what's going on with you okay 
So the, it includes the definition, and uh, we just go through them one by one and implement them. So, do we know what our constructor for the token looks like? Yes, we do. So we get an expression, we get a CC, we get a source, we get a starting position and ending position. And all we do is store the expression for ourselves and then do the rest. Right? Okay, so that's relatively easy to do. Okay, uh, next for the description. Parent token description would be return left parentheses, right parentheses, and exp describe like so for our two asd since this is only a parentheses we are just going to call two asd on our underlying expression right right we don't need to deal with uh a new abstract syntax tree node because the parenthesis doesn't do anything, right? That's enough. Okay, so that's the token. And as for the parser, um, parent parser, the constructor, parent parser. So the LS, LPSP should be SR parentheses and RPSP should be SR parentheses. There's no body involved, and we need to include symbols. Right. And how does the schema look like? Well, uh, we define the schema as a parse result. Parent parser like that, scheme. So. We want you to capture LTSP dot parse cc s and position and then capture the expression. Uh, let's call this let's call this temp and then ants would be and followed by right parentheses. Okay, if ants isn't available, return the error. If it is available, return new parse result. Oh, sorry, return parse result with a new uh, parent token. So, what's our token? It is token the second one we have cc we have source and the starting position is this one and the ending position is that one right that's that's basically our uh parenthesis parser we don't need to add any asd for this one because you know you don't need to represent parentheses in your asd Uh, I am guessing, yeah. This should have an E here. That was just a typo. It's compiled, it is going to link, and we are going to test it. Test it. Right, so, so this, the basic version works. The basic version works. So, well, we don't know if it actually works, so let's try it out. Yes, the 
zero is stored there and we, we get it out. So that's good. Next, we need to do the hard thing, which is binary operation on pointers. Right. So how do you want to handle that? Well, uh, here, if I try to compile that, it doesn't know how to apply. Yeah, it says type doesn't support that operation. But we know that that type actually does support that operation. So we have to deal with that in our own way. Uh, this one should give us the same errors, and their solution is basically the same thing, right? We just have to add support to uh, our pointer type. So, pointer type here. Let's get the second type. So, type of star RHST would be RHS. RHS type. So we capture that type and we see if it's a pointer type or not. So if it was a pointer type, and we can dynamic cast here to pointer type like that. So if that was a thing, we might be able to. Oh, no, no, no. The second one should be a primary, a primitive type, right? Because we can't add pointers to pointers. We can add pointers to integers. There's a difference, right? So we do that. Uh, it is complaining because I made a mistake here. Like that is solved now. Right. So if it's a primitive type, and if the primitive type, uh, so it should be an int. So is int pt key. Of course, is int is not defined globally. So I have to go there and do that. Uh, is int just copy this one and go to primitive type dot header. Define that. Okay. So if it is an integer, we can do what we want to do. And the operator is plus. Other or so it should be. It's either plus or. Minus. They both should work. Right? So return true. Return false otherwise. Uh, so does it make sense for it to do that? We capture the type, we ensure that they are an integer, and it's a plus or a minus. Yes, that makes total sense. Okay. So for the actual type result, uh, we can again copy this one. And if all of these is true, the type is what we are, right? I don't think pointer requires any other operation. So I'm going to remove the to-do statement. OK. That seems to be correct. Right. So how does the type generation work? Again, I'm going to copy this one here. I have an LHS and I have an RHS. So uh, the way to do that would be to first generate the RHS to a value. So RHS. EXPR gen like so. And this will give me the 
uh, in this is an integer, right? And I also have a pointer which is in LHS. This is a pointer. Now, how do I tell it to go forward that many things? So let's actually look at a C example. I'm going to create a thing here. So we have a pointer. I mean, it doesn't have to really work. So let's just do that. That. So uh, I want to return a star to PTR plus one. Right. I know this doesn't work, but you know, just assume it does. Um, so let's see how it handles. So, right. So we have to do a, a GEP operator on what? So we have we load the pointer, and then we do a GEP on it. That makes sense. Right. So we load the pointer and then we do a GEP. This is the loading pointer and then a GEP. So it is, uh, wait, do we, have, do we need an extra load after that? Uh, I don't think so. Right. So the extra load is because I added a starter. Okay. The so GEP should be everything that we need to do. So here I am going to return, look at the LLVM context, the builder, create. Uh, what's your problem? You need to have access to base. Okay. So CC LLC builder, create. Inbound GEP. Right. So what do I need to pass to you? I need to pass an a pointer and an ID. So the pointer is P, right? And the ID we will create a vector of LLVM value star called index. And index we push at back the value. Right? And let's make sure that these are LLVM value star. Both of them. Okay. So we also pass in the index, and that should be everything. Right? Right. So let's compile that and see if it actually works. We can verify it. Verify whether it works or not by looking at uh, first the assembly code and then by running it. Okay, it compiled. It generated a lot of things for us. Uh, seems to be okay. So we are. Let, let's compare it with the CLLVM code. So it is creating a GEP of the appropriate type it is i64 this is the pointer that has been loaded once and that's the index so this is two this is one because we are doing it twice okay so that's that's okay compile it run it wow it worked so we have pointer arithmetics just like that that was really that was really good So if I do this, should this also work or not? Let's let's try that. So ideally, it should multiply these two first and then add it that one, and the value should be two. Let's see if it works. The value is two, which is what I expected to see. Uh, what if I do something like this? You reference that, and this is going to be five. And also, I am going to tell you to multiply your value by 20.
Yeah. Uh, so does this matter whether the the star is inside or outside? It shouldn't matter, right? This should be the same thing as this one. I, will, I guess we'll find out. So let's see. It should be the same because pointer uh, or not should not be the same. I don't know. Let's let's see. Let's see. So okay. This isn't what I expected. So one step at a time. Uh, do I get five as the last attribute here? I don't. So there is a problem with this one. If I add the parentheses there, what about now? I still don't. So what are we getting there? We are getting, we should be getting the second pointer. Oh, right, 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 right. No, that, that, that is actually correct. This shouldn't be like this. So we should do pointer plus two points to that one, or we should do star pointer to that points to that one, right? We can't have both of them. Right, so I'm going to say PTR2 just to try that one, which is uh, a pointer like that, points to PTR plus 2. This is what I wanted to do. So that was an error on my part. The compiler was doing fine. Right, so we get 0 here because... PTR2 has not been assigned, right? But if I say, okay, now the content of PTR2 is the address of i. So, I still get zero. Uh, that shouldn't be the case. Should it be? I don't think so. I don't know. So, so I think there's a, there's a problem with this one. But if you do it like, uh... yeah, there's a problem with that. Certainly, I don't know how to express what uh, problem I'm talking about, but there is a problem there. And the problem is that I should be able to say PTR plus two equals and I, but this is going to cause an error because we don't have anything that can parse this one, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it produces a parse error. So this is going to be the project for our next stream, uh, but now I'm just going to keep testing the pointer arithmetic. So if I assign the pointer two to five, now here I should get 100, right? Because we evaluate that, multiply it by 20, and then we print it here. So let's see if this works. GCC and then run it. You do get 100. So the pointer arithmetic seems to be working, only the pointer assignment with an index is incorrect. Right. And so one question that I have, from you guys, if you uh, do, you think it makes sense for this operator to be this value plus two or this value? Personally, I think it should be this value plus two, right? But that's something that. Uh, Yeah, it should be this value plus two. I think. Mm, I'm, I'm trying to think here. 
Hi Marcel, welcome back. How was your walk? What would line 13 do? Right. Yeah, you are completely right. So line 13 should be to produce an error, I think. I don't know. What does C how does CD? Because I, I never like write code like this, right? I never I never do this personally. Uh, what you're doing here is you're we are telling the star that you have a higher precedence uh, than the binary operations. I personally never write a code like this, so that's 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 on me. Uh, but some programmers might, and we have to think about them as well. All right. So let's see how does C handle that. Um, okay. Line 13 would be a compiler or something because the left hand side returns something or whatever. Yeah, there are, it would be basically an R value. We are assigning to an R value if that's the case. But I have to just check to see uh, how C handles that. Maybe. Right. So. C, yeah, that's exactly what C does. Okay. So this should be a parse error. Right. And this this is fine, but this should be a parse error. And we can we can fix that by changing. Right. The way we are going to fix that is by, by changing the parser behavior. We are going to say in the uh, pointer value, uh, or the PTR value, in the PTR value parser, yeah, I know that. Uh, um, I mean, when I write low level, and work with pointers, I try to be as precise as possible. I never write a code like this. Never. Because, you know, looking at that, you just don't know how to, how to interpret it. Right? Um, so, yeah. Pointer value parser the header. So here, we are working with any expression. I think we should change that to either an ID or a parenthesis. Do we want to do that? Or do you want to define precedence in some way in our parser other than the recursion that we have currently? Like I think what I'm talking about here is a temporary fix. And we might encounter another problem like so in future. So maybe, maybe we should introduce a precedence there somehow. Yeah, maybe we should. All right. You know what? Let's do that. So we are going to change. Uh, I'm going to commit what I have at this point. Base pointer arithmetic and parent parser. We're going to do that at this point. But <sighs> yeah. So let's change the expression parser. And here we are. No, that's the C plus plus file. The header file. So we have an optional precedence, which is minus one by default. And uh, we introduce two constructor. One that doesn't take anything. And one that takes the precedence. Uh, we don't need to assign it there, I guess. 
but and let's go to the expression parser.c file and oh this should be int right so expression parser expression parser if you don't get anything as input set your precedence to minus one and that's it right if you do get a precedence set it here is that okay yes now when you want to parse the expression pass it to the parser okay so we pass it to our parser and now we have to go and change the definition for this one so you also get a precedent um known for a default argument here honestly right let's go there uh go definition of this one oh of course you can't find it because i changed the signature so um parse expression you also get a precedence so this is supposed to handle the order that we want to parse things and um when you get an expression rule So, how do you want to handle this one? You know, I'm going to take a short break and refill my water, and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, and we are back. Right, so we should. Um, yeah. So, what I'm thinking is that we should have a function or something that returns the precedent of the rule. 
right? So, here I am going to uh, do R the get press and oh, not there. Here, All right. So, if that is lower. Lower than the press, then continue. And we are going to define that on all of our parse rules. So parse, um, it's in parser, isn't it? Yes, so parse rule. You all have a virtual int press function that by default, so um, yeah, int parse rule press. So by default, we will return 10. I don't know why we're just going to do that. 10 sounds like a good number to start, right? Uh, yeah, so that's going to be the default value for now. And for certain things, we are interested in a lower value. For example, uh, variable value should have oh, variable value parser. So you will have a precedence variable value parser. You will have a precedence of five, I guess. So just less than ten. Um, right. And same thing goes for. Oh, but I have to add that to. The header file. So you have a virtual int press that is overriding. You have the same thing for a parentheses. So parentheses should basically have a precedence of zero, right? Because they come before everything else. So parent parser dot cpp. Let's create a int parent parser press that returns zero. Right? Does that make sense? I hope so. I do hope so. Now, for the uh, pointer, pointer assign. Pointer assign parser, I guess. So here we have an expression parser, and this expression parser should accept precedence of five or lower. Right? Yes. So let's say this is five or lower. Um, no, not here. We should do it. In the C++ file, in the constructor, we say that the expression parser does five or lower. Did you say? Did you say? Um, how did you handle it here? So, oh, this should be later, right? Um, parse rule doesn't have, oh, it has, we, 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 just, we called it press, didn't we? Yes. Right. So there's that. And also, we have to do the same thing for pointer. 
value parser. So here we also have an expression that needs to know that you're looking at things that are five or lower. Right. Let's compile that and let's see how this behave that this affects our compiler. I think this was a good approach. What do you think, Jet? Is this a good idea to handle things like this? Uh, everything is being compiled again. A lot of files were affected. Oh, we have an error. So the error is in file value parser that cpp and parse expression right so by default you should have zero no uh you should have minus one right and i forgot to do that i forgot to affect minus one here so if press is not minus one and that or it's if it's higher than minus one i guess right i wasn't paying enough attention to answer that that's okay that's okay um we will see if it works or not either everything works on the first try Trying to wrap my head brain around how to use letters in C++. You have to use CMake. Uh, that that simplifies things a lot. Of course, you can just you have to pass the library to the compiler, or you can use CMake. So it didn't parse the file as expected because we made two errors here. And here, right. So that got compiled. Yeah, I'll answer that. Just let me. Uh, I'm going to try this out and then answer that. CMake list mentions LVM. Uh, it's just you have to look at the CMake of the parent. You're probably looking at CMake of one of the children. Okay, so let's see if this works. So uh, I am going to create an empty buffer. So we encounter I, we set it to five. That's okay. Pointer is an array. So one, two, three. See, we have we are, we are allocating a pointer of size three. We set the first one to zero. We set the second one to one. We set this to five. And then we set it to another number, which is pointer zero plus two. That's a still that's two times twenty. That's forty. And then we print i. So we should get five. We print the value of First pointer plus 10, that's 10. We print the value of the second pointer, that's 1. We print the value of second pointer, 2 times 1 is 2, plus pointer, that's 2 still. So yeah, so that that is fixed. That is fixed. Yeah, there are, so CMake is layered in our project. Right, so I'm going to commit this change. Um, added press and fixed uh, pointer press. Okay, pointer value press. I want to say. Right, so let me show you how CMake is done. In the root of the project, we have a CMake list, and here we declare the minimum required CMake version. 
we set a debug flag, we introduce a project called Rumi. We mentioned that their binary should go into the binary folder. We set the executable output path to that. We set the library output path to that. And then we say we are using C14 and you have to use that. And then we say, okay, now go look at the subdirectory source. Then if you go to the source and look at CMake, you see it says include LLVM, add their definition. And then we have a base library that basically base the CP and LL context. Then you have two subdirectories, parser and AST. Then find the LLVM package. It is required to configure it. Just print the message. And then these are the libraries we want to work with from the LLVM. Then this is our configuration file. This is the template. This is the expected file. Then include, yeah, we add this directory to handle that. Then link a uh, base with parser and AST. Then we have an executable called rom, which is from rom.cpp. And we have a roomy, which is from roomy.cpp. And then we link those with base and uh, base LLVM. That's basically what we are doing. OK? This is how our CMake is structured. And uh, we added two subdirectories, and inside of those, it's just a basic, uh, a basic globe that looks for all of the C++ files and adds them to this library. And if you want to run that, uh, you can use CMake however you want. But I am, I am using these commands. So I am using this one to generate CMake, just change the directory path, and this one to generate the binaries. We have to install them for LLVM. Uh, so are you using Linux or are you using Windows or Mac? You probably have to install LLVM. And I main machine. I do that by okay. So I'm not sure about Windows, but for Linux, you just install the LLVM libraries. I just install LLVM like that, and that's the end of it, right? Uh, on Windows, you probably have to get LLVM from somewhere. LLVM download Windows. Just download and install it. Yeah. I think LLVM comes with a, a CLang installation if you have that. Otherwise, you just you can you can get it here. Um, yeah. There are free uh, pre-built binaries available, so you can just get probably this one. But I haven't optimized this code to run on Windows. I'm not sure even if it does or not. Uh, you have to test it for me, I guess. <laughs> uh, it probably won't because here, I think, uh, no, it should work. Yeah. It should work, but I, I'm not sure about it. So when I finish uh, the structs and interfaces, I am going to create a very basic build system, probably on GitHub. And uh, we will, oh, you probably use Windows subsystem for Linux. OK, that's fine too. Anything that works is fine. Right? But you know, uh, after a while, like when we finish the basics here, I am going to introduce um, something that it, you can just download the compiler and run it like any other compiler. With the package manager, probably. And we will ask GitHub to compile everything for us using, uh, I think it's called GitHub Flows or something like that, right? Yes, it is in AppGet. OK. So there's that. Now I want to have this option. 
So I think it's a good idea to also have this one. No problem. So it's a good idea to have this one. A current workaround for that would be if I define a pointer to pointer, assign that from this one, and then say, I know this is, this sounds crazy, but just bear with me. If I do, uh, it should be pointer, 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 let's call it that. So pointer, pointer, plus two equals at pi. So this essentially works. Yes, this works. And let's, let's run it and see. Oh, uh, we aren't printing the last one, are we? No. Int, int. Oh, we are printing the last one. It is here. So, probably this should be. I don't know. But uh, this should also work, right? That's, that's a valid statement. We are assigning to the second index of our pointer. So uh, we have to define a parse rule for that, but we don't need an AST uh, because everything, or we might need an AST, who knows? Let's just see. OK. Let's put that down. And uh, so to parse that statement, on the left hand side, we have an expression, and on the right hand side, we have a value. We have an assignment in the middle. So I'm going to look at the assign parser, uh, the headers of the assign parser. And we are going to, we are going to copy from here, well, not copy, we are going to uh, use this as a base. And we are going to create something called an expression assign parser dot header. Does that make sense? Yes. So uh, we are basically this file. Um, copy and paste it here. So we don't have an ID parser. We have an expression parser instead. We don't have an assign token, we have an expression assigned. Uh, XPR assign. We have an expression assigned parser, we have an expression assigned parser. We don't have an ID parser, we have an expression parser EP. The rest should be it. Uh, oh, we just have to change this one. So we get an EXPR. And a token there, and we also get an expr here. All right, so so that's the header file. Just let me make sure everything is in order. Right. So, how do we want to deal with that? Well, um, We want to deal with that by going to parser.cpp by including this file here and registering as a rule in the statements. Right? So this is an statement. And I'm going to put it after the pointer assign. OK. Right. And that makes sense, uh, more or less. So let's, let's write the code. Explosion assign. Parser.cpp. 
I wonder. Maybe instead of writing a new file, maybe we can actually. I think I I, I jumped to conclusion too fast. Maybe we could have used it in another scenario. So yeah, we we could have used the original assign. Can we? I think this would obsolete the original assign. So yeah, we should do that. I'm gonna remove this one. I'm gonna remove this line and the other line with it. And rm xpr assign parser uh, star. Right. Just make sure that I haven't messed up anything that bad. No. So also close this terminal window. Right. So uh, in the assign parser, we are kind of dealing with IDs directly. Maybe we can use an expression parser here. And instead of IP, let's use an expression parser again. And instead of an ID, let's deal with uh, EXPR here and an EXPR here, right? So how are we going to handle that? Uh, you don't get an ID anymore. You get a token EXPR. You call it like that. When you're calling the assign, you Pass your expression like so, and when you're describing yourself, you do it like so. You don't have an ID token anymore, um, you are dealing with a TID directly. Right? Yes. That should be it. So now the assign mm, here. So the assign is expecting an ID and you're telling it that you are getting an expression instead. Uh, Base EXPR. And here you're also getting an expression like so, uh, which is potentially right. So, ID parser, I have to make sure. Yeah, so we return a variable value in ID parser, so this is fine. So this line is fine. Just update that, right. So now here, we have to update our sign. So what do we want to do? Let's, let's look at this file. So we did get an expression, base expression. And you assign the base expression based on base expression, right? So there's that. Where you're preparing, you prepare base XPR as well. And here you will compile base EXPR as well. So I think in the variable in the variable value in the compile function of that. We do look up for missing variables, so so we don't need this anymore. As for the casting, we can get the type by doing this. So you get the type of that, and we take care of the casting, and then in the code generation, you don't need to deal with named, uh, you have the alloca generator, so you can just say uh, let's 
let's remove that. Instead of this one, we are going to write base expression dot aloca gen. And convert that to an LLVM value star. There's that. Uh, for the type, we do base expression type. So this would be our assign, and I think this assign also takes care of pointer assignment. So we don't need to deal with pointers directly anymore. Right? Because pointers are also expressions. Of, yeah. Yeah. So let's re look at CMake. Save parser. We do CMake. Uh, delete this line. Recompile. Okay. We potentially don't need the this one this line anymore. Where is it? This one. So I think this is obsolete. But let's see if this works first, and then we can deal with the others. So generate that. Creating other cons of an unsupported type. That's completely understandable. I know why that is happening. But um. Will it work if I comment this out? It does work. And it didn't have an effect because, you know, we are a peg parser. So assign parser is uh, given a priority to pointer assign. So we always focus on this one regardless. You can see it doesn't change how the thing is written. So I'm going to, we're going to completely do pointer assign. We don't need pointer assigned anymore. Also, we need to remove it from the AST. So AST pointer assign that CPP. I'm going to remove the header file, but not the CPP, just so that I have something to look at. Why did I? What did I remove? Okay. okay. Right. So uh, just so that I have something to get inspiration from. Yeah, this is exactly what we are doing there. Only we have casting support there as well. So let's remove this one as well. Okay. So it is complaining that we are doing aloca on unsupported type, let's see what it means by that. So I am going to comment out everything except uh, the first line. So that should compile. That does compile. What if I add the second line? It still compiles. What if I add i equal three? Well, uh, let's do five so that we are we get the same result as before. So what should I get now? It compiles. What about now? It compiles. What about now? It compiles. Now compiles again. Now compiles again. I'm guessing this is the problematic one. Right, creating calling aloca on unsupported type. So what type is that that is unsupported? Do we know that? So the, the current problem is that our types do not have descriptors, right? So we don't know what type is parsed on the left-hand side, and therefore we don't know uh, what is not able to all get aloca on, right? Right. So to handle that, 
I guess we know where the problem lies, right? The problem is here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Maybe this one? Right. It probably is this line, actually. Now that I think about it. So, does this work? Pointer equals at i. So this works, but this one doesn't. So let's look at our sign. Yeah, it has to be the line here, right? So pointer type that cpp. When you are uh, when you're adding things, when we are doing the binary operation, you return this, and you should have aloca. Um, pointer type should have a local. Oh, it's binary type that doesn't have a local. Right, 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 right. Binary type doesn't have a local. Well, it should. It should have a local. Let me just see. Let's see if it's, it's actually this line. That is producing the error, and then we will work a solution for it. Uh, what? Oh, we have to regenerate CMake, and we have to redo that. Okay. Run this. Yeah. That's exactly the line that is causing the trouble. So we potentially have an aloca if our type supports it. So what is? Huh. Is there a good way of handling this one? That doesn't require us to jump through a hundred hoops. I doubt it. I think we should do something weird here. And I, I really don't like it. Um, let's see. I am going to look at the old source code. Right, so in the old source code, oh, you can't see that. Um, sorry about that. In the old source code, what we are doing here is that uh, it is in statements. We have a pointer assignment, I think. We have a member, uh, member statement, and we have a variable assignment, right? And in the variable assignment, we are just kind of calling alloca on the base. And if the base happens to be a binary operation, it doesn't have a get alloca. So how does it handle that? I don't know how we actually handle this. Okay, so we can fix this. This, this isn't a big deal. 
can fix this together. So we probably have to call operator generation. So this is what I'm going to do. Resolve your own type. Resolve your own type. If it is a pointer type, just return exp origin. I know this is ugly, but I think this is going to work. And we can see if it does in just a second. It compiles. And it doesn't work. So possibly uh, in the pointer type, We, we do return an inbound DEP, but we don't access that. So, so this should work actually. So why why isn't it working? Is it a is there a problem with our code here? So let's look at that. I'm saying pointer two should be the content of i, and Right, there is a problem. There is a problem, and the problem is that um, GEP actually loads the element for us, and we don't want to load it. So how does C handle this? We can always ask that question. How does C handle this? So we know for a fact that this is a valid operation. So we are able to say ptr plus 2 equals 4 or something. If I compile that and open it, what does this look like? So you get a GEP and you store on it. How did our code handle it? Uh, it is before any of the print integers. So yeah, so it, it, it did the exact same thing. We did a GEP and a stored I inside of it. This seems to be correct. Uh, oh, except that I'm not, except it should be like this and it should be an int I equals four and then do that. You're actually running this code, not the other one. Sorry about that. Error generated expression is not assignable. Really? Well, we know that it is assignable if we do it like this. So do that for us instead. Incompatible point of integer conversion from int to int star, remove and. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh... Oh. Yeah, this makes sense. I think I can do it for you now. Fun C makes seems happy now. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad that it works. Compile it and let me know uh, if you can run the example that we're running. So, uh, 
the error that C is making makes complete sense. We are trying to assign, like this should work, right? Yeah, I mean, that's WSO, but you know, it doesn't matter as long as it works. We will have a Windows build, build too. We do have CMake, so that's not a problem. You just have to set up LLVM, and that's a pain in the ass, so. So C is telling us that this should work. See, I'm confused. Uh, in my mind, this operation should be possible. Oh, I know why. Because we need to do it like so. No? It's not assignable. So let me see. So uh, in case of C, what we are doing here is uh, we are defining an, a pointer. And this is telling the, the C compiler that the second indices of your pointer should be right. So this is the second indices. Right. I guess it doesn't make sense to have, a, have this operation. Right, because this is a pointer. Um, yeah, because you know this is an array of pointers basically. So it doesn't make sense to have this operation. And if you do that, that should work. Right? As does its C counterpart. Right. Test.ll. So yeah, this works. And so should that. But when we run that, it says I cannot cast types. Wait, so see again, I'm, I'm confused again. Uh, I think I should stop actually because I'm making a lot of errors and I don't know if what I'm doing makes sense. So Pointer is a place in memory at this point, and when we, we put a star behind it, we're assigning to it. That that makes sense. Pointer plus one is the index next, and this is the index after that. And they accept integers. This is a viable thing to do. Because at this point, pointer is just, it is a pointer. And we can, act, we can, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's, that's correct. So this is correct. This, however, is completely incorrect and it shouldn't be able to cast it and it cannot. So I'm happy there. And this one. This one is just wrong. Isn't that? Because on the left hand side, you have an integer. And on the right hand side, yeah, you shouldn't, even, you shouldn't be able to, do, to say this at all. So, so this makes sense for it to produce an error. Right. I am sorry about the thing that we went through. Compile that. Yes, I think that's correct. But the good thing was we, we, got, we got rid of uh, a repetitive code. So I'm happy about that. And let's see if it compiles, if it works, and if it runs. Okay. So I'm going to mark this 
assign cleanup and push it to the server to the GitHub. But I'm telling my other version getting v10 from the repo, and that's not working. No, yeah, we are working with LLVM version 11. I forgot to tell you that. Uh, I hope that's available for Ubuntu. I think that's what uh, WSL uses, right? You should use LLVM version 11. Yeah. Actually, the reason why we are rewriting the compiler is because LLVM version 10 was incompatible with some of the things that we wanted to do. So the first version of the compiler worked with LLVM 9. Yeah, we can get that. Right, so there's that. And uh, what I want to do, I want to take a short break here and just not think about that code because that is giving me anxiety at this point. So, um, right. So we have all of that things uh, and they are working great. But uh, we still have a few problems. The most important one being that we don't have a structs and interfaces. So if we add structs, interfaces, and enums, I think we are the same place that the, um, what do you call it? If we add those, we would be at the same place that this code, the, Here, oh, no, not all VM. Uh, Rumi, sorry, it would be at the, the correct place that the documentation expects us to be, right? Because we have those, um, we have void any int u8. We don't have floats, right? We don't have arrays. I mean, we do have, we, we, we parse them, but we don't generate code for them, so that's something that we can work on potentially. Yeah, structs we don't have methods. Oh, we also have to add them interface, and we have if else while, and we have com return and size of, and we don't have compiled directives. So we are getting there. We're close. We're really close. Okay. So, what should we work on next, folks? Thank you, Marcel. Um, hello, Pi Poison My Fish. How's it going? It's going great. We just finished pointer arithmetics, pointer access, and pointer assign in our compiler. How are you doing? Right. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Don't worry about it. I know it happens to me, so, right? Okay. Uh, we need to probably keep working on something else. I think the structs, you're taking a break from OpenGL. Why is that? <laughs> it is. The, the problem with OpenGL is that, you know, it's a state machine. I really hate that. I mean, there's no way around it, like, right? You're working, you're working with a, uh, you're working with a hardware there, but that's, the, that's really annoying. What are you working on with OpenGL? I want to work on structs, but I'm afraid of starting it. It's going to be a lot of work to program that. Build 4.8, wow. 
I think the latest code that I wrote was 3.3. Been a while since I read that route. You're making a happy little game. That's nice to hear. I want to see your game. Okay. Uh, maybe you can use Rumi in part of the programming there <laughs> to add your headaches. So struct. Let's do it. There's no. There's no point in uh, not doing it, right? So struct in Rumi, I think the specification, where did it go? The specification is that we have a name, a struct, field, type, semicolon. OK. So um, I'm going to create a test s. It's a struct. And we are going to have an ID of integer. And I guess that's it, right? So first of all, the parser should be able to parse this statement, which I'm sure it doesn't at the moment. Uh, in, yeah. Can parse file at index whatever. That is really great. I'm happy to hear that. So were you able to compile the latest version of Rumi? Is that what you're saying? Or are you talking about OpenGL? Right. That's great. Uh, poison my fish. That's a very interesting name. Uh, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with Rumi, but we have a pretty good compiler here, and we are rewriting the compiler, actually. There is an older version that works. Uh, OK. Oh, all right. Sorry about that. I don't know how to pronounce that. But OK. I want to call you fish. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a very base compiler at the moment, but it, it, it does work. And, yeah, it, it does work. Uh, we have some pretty good, cool features. And we're just rewriting the compiler because uh, we need to work through some problems that the, the old code base wouldn't let us, right? And yeah, so let's start by parsing this. So how do you want to parse a struct statement? Well, a struct statement is very similar to an assigned one, except it isn't an assigned one. Right. Uh, <clears throat> there goes my voice. OK. So the struct statement, um, this part is handled by the assign. This is a type, right? And I'm not sure if we should do it like that or if we should parse the whole thing. I'm more inclined toward parsing the whole thing, but I think it would be a good idea if we keep it uh, as not vague, but as um, small as possible. So, well, the parser doesn't care about that. So let's just do it. Uh, we have the struct parser dot h. We are including the parser, and uh, we can. Do it like this. So the struct parser is a parse rule. 
and we have so what do we have here uh we have a keyword so uh, it's a private of course we have a keyword parser for a struct keyword parser So yeah, of course, uh, you can look at the implementation here. We are currently working on the CRUMI branch. Uh, you might want to switch to that. Otherwise, you are going to get uh, the old version. There are three uh, or four branches there. So yeah. So we also have to include the word parser h thanks Marcel maybe maybe I should actually update the command so yeah I am going to do that confirm yeah make sure to get a little bit the current Thank you, Marcel, for that. So yeah, uh, oh, keyword, not key brought. Right. So we have that parser. We also have the open curly brackets and the closing curly brackets. So um, we want to say symbol parser, left curly symbol parser, and right curly symbol parser. Include symbol parser for that, and I think this is just the define thingy, right? We don't need to redefine another uh, to handle that manually, basically. So we can do define parser dp, right? So we need to have a constructor. To assign to basically set those, and this is C plus plus mode editor keep up, right? And uh, then we need to write our parse rule. So parse results scheme. We get CC source and the starting position. Assuming that exist we can register it with our parser uh in the parser that c plus plus file so include a struct parser and register it as a type so the benefit of registering it as a type is that uh, we will we will be able to use anonymous structs Right. So we just have to implement it. And struct parser dot plus plus. So include the struct parser dot header like so and the constructor. So we want to initialize LCSP with symbol left curly bracket let's include symbols uh, right. right curly uh, right bracket sorry it's Are you sure it's 11, 11, not 12? I have 11 now, and we're getting on no such a such as well. I am quite sure, actually. There is no 11, 12, first of all, and then you can see that I am on LLVM 11. So, probably there's a possibility that CMake has not realized where your library is. Make sure that it knows. Yeah. 
make sure that CMake has found your library and try to regenerate the CMake rules. It says fun. Okay, uh, so what you can do, you can you can remove the the generated files if you generate them with uh, LLVM ten and then regenerate them just in case. Let's see how that turns out. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we include include our keywords. Oh, you did regenerate it. So that the error that you're getting there is because LLVM is. Uh, Sorry, C++ is not able to find your LLVM headers. Oh, I know why, why that is. So I think on, on Windows, uh, you have to omit the, the initial LLVM. So it should say IR slash IR builder. No, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure we can figure it out. If you couldn't open up an issue and we can work it together. Yes. Um, so maybe, I don't know then. I have, I have no idea why, why is that happening. Could you, could you try a minimum C++ file that just includes that file and play with uh the curl brackets and replace them with um these symbols what are they called uh these ones it could be a compiler thing right so we also have the struct keyword here and keyword parser there. Angle bracket, yes. That's the word I'm looking for. Right. So let's define the, the struct keyword and here also as well. Is it all? Yes, that is all. Right. Now for the schema, Marcel, if you weren't able to solve the problem, open up an issue and uh, we will work on it together. It's a little bit hard to do it uh, like this. I have a Windows virtual machine. I can boot it up and run WSL on it and see what is going wrong. Right, but it's a little bit hard to debug over a, a stream. Right, so our parse rule is basically we expect the well, not so fast. We expect to see the base, which is the keyword parser. Followed by left curly brackets. And then in the end, we should see right curly brackets. Okay. No problem, man. Thank you for trying the compiler. Right. So I'm going to try this one first uh, without any members and see if it works. Potentially, it might throw me an error and expect me to put the semicolon there. And if it does that, you're just going to... Uh, yeah, it, it is going to do that. I don't want to put semicolons here because that looks ugly. Right, that's my main reason for not adding semicolons there. But... I mean, it's, it's not the end of the world, right? So maybe, yeah, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to def define it as a type rule. I'm going to define it as a top rule instead. Where are my top rules? Right. This is going to be top rule like so, and we are going to add in the ID parser. 
So you have ID parser, IDP, keyword parser, symbol parser, define parser, and you also need to have Yes. I agree. I don't like to have them there. Uh, we also need to have the column parser. So column symbol parser. Exactly. I, I completely agree with what you're saying. So this is a symbol or column. Like that. Right. And now um, this is going to be the ID parser followed by a comma parser followed by the struct keyword parser, left curly brackets, right curly brackets, and compile. So the parser should parse it, but the code generation should throw us an error. And that is totally expected. You have a link error because you have to regenerate CMake. That's understandable. We compile. And that is done. OK. So run it. Uh, couldn't parse file at that index. So what seems to be the problem then? Uh, test two. So this is a top rule. We have the ID. We have the column. We have the struct keyword. Right. Uh, let me disable the. What do you call it? Um, golden ratio. Okay. So. We get the ID, we get the struct, we get the column, sorry, right, we get the struct keyword, oh, maybe, maybe adding an S space here is going to solve that, no, we get the left curly bracket, the right curly bracket. So this looks fine. Maybe we are making a mistake in the struct, uh, in the symbols. So symbol comma, let's look at symbol parser. I doubt it, but I'm just going to check. Uh, COL should be. That's correct. Maybe it's because of the, the, the comments. So I'm just going to move that out. No. Comments are ignored. I know that for a fact. Uh, I've never seen that way of representing syntax with the bit shift, whatever it's called operator. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's our own code. The bit shift operator. Um, so. If you look at the parser, the header, uh, any parse results, the parse result has an operator that accepts a parse rule and basically returns another parse result. So you can chain them together. And yeah, so that's the idea behind that one. You can see uh, for the first one, we, we have to pass in the arguments, but after that, we just chain them together. And so if one of them fails, the parse result is allowed to have a failed version. So, yeah. Uh, right. Thank you. I wanted to have something that is easy to work with, so that's why we created that one. Right. So. The next thing that comes to my mind is maybe in the in the actual code here we aren't parsing for top. 
Now we are parsing for top. So did you register it for I'm I'm just going to second guess myself until I find the the problem. We did uh register it as a top rule. So is it being called at all? Let's see if it is being invoked. And if so, uh, invited use of incomplete file CC. Right. There you go. So, okay. Yes, you are being invoked. But for some reason, you are empty. Let's see at your. Uh, I am going to. What is going on? LSP just died on me. Okay. So if base is available, just tell us that. Saw base <clears throat> Let's see if this one works. Okay. Uh you didn't see base. Okay, so the problem is here. I am going to break this one. Do you see temp? You did see temp, so you, you can see the ID. Can you see the CSP? Uh, right. You do see the CSP as well. So do you see the keyword parser? I'm guessing that's the problem, probably. Yeah, so you don't see the keyword parser. And uh, we can look at why. So we are saying that the keyword parser is a struct. There's a high possibility that I might have uh, made a typo somewhere. So let's look at symbol. Uh, no, sorry, keyword. So if it is a struct, see this is correct. Oh, you're returning key. Okay, yeah, I made a mistake here. You you should return a struct if you see a struct. Uh, is this okay elsewhere? Right. So that was a problem. That was a problem with the parser, and that should be solved now. And we can validate that it is solved by running it. So it did parse uh, everything here, basically. Yeah. So that's good news. So maybe we should think about uh parsing the members so the members are basically uh we can just call a define parser on them so we define a temp and we say uh it is base define parser 
And while temp is correct, assign it, assign it to base, and then uh, redo the thing here. Okay, so this should see the members, basically. Right. Compile that. The good thing about using a defined parser is that we can handle default values in a struct as well in one go. Um, so, yeah, it did see the defined thingy here. Will it work if we have two or more? For example, you can have an A of type string. Let's say let's say, call it name just for the sake of having a meaningful thing. So yes, but you know it's a mess and you have to correct that. So what you're going to do is creating a token for our structs. So we go back to the struct parser. A struct token. It's a public token. And we basically have to write a constructor and an error list of inner types. So study vector, what are these called? They are define token, I want to say. Members. You also have a name. And we need to have a constructor, which is a struct token. You should see the ID here. Can you see the ID here? No, never mind. Just CC source starting position and the end position. And you should have the describe method that you're overriding. And you also should have the two AST method. All right, okay. Work, please, fingers. <clears throat> okay, so here uh, we get the answer. If it is false for whatever reason, return it. Oh, we have to we have to do something like that because I want to also delete a pointer here. So we create a uh, a struct token star st new struct token. You get the cc, you get the s, you get the position, and you get another position just because. And here, if I wasn't able to create you, I'm going to delete you, right? Because you have a vector and you're expensive to deal with. Now, if if that works, we just have to update the start position and the end position, which we do by saying the start position is uh, ends the token dot the start position. Same goes for end position, right? And then we will return a parse result that encapsulate you. Okay? So this will be our scheme. Now we have to define these three methods. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so let's start by creating the constructor again. We capture all of this information like so. Uh, right. So the CC is, comes from there, the source comes from there, the starting position 
transponder and the end position transponder. Right? That's easy, relatively. I'm seriously losing my voice here, guys. Um, right. So uh, let's create a description. Um, something is wrong somewhere. My editor isn't working correctly. I think one of the files that I have included has a error. I'm going to kill that file and then open it again. Okay, so we expect to see a struct with the ID. Again, this is inefficient, but it doesn't matter because this is only for debug. And then I expect to see a column and then the members. Members a string. What is members? Uh, members a string a starts with an empty string and for each of the members, I want you to add a new line, a star, and their description. Okay, so that's your description. And for the final function, for the two AST function, we just return zero for now. Okay, this stream has been live for three hours, 22 minutes, and eight seconds. Yes, we've been coding for three hours and a half, non-stop. <clears throat> well, we, we did take two short breaks. Okay, compile that and compile that. Wait, what? Oh. Uh, struct token UAST, right. Let's see, yeah, it worked. And can we run this? Uh, it says a struct, but there are no members. Um, that's because we forgot to capture the members, right. So, uh, every time temp is true, we have to push back. Right. So, I'm going to say mem. And let's see what mem is. Mem would be, this is a tuple token. Temp is a tuple token. And we want the second element. And we know for a fact that this is a defined token. Right. And as for the name, we also have to set the name. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to say base equals base like that. And here. If we don't have a base, just return early. But if we have a base, I want you to extract the ID. So st.id would be, this is an ID token. And you have an ID that I want, right? So just give me that. No one has to get hurt. Uh, base.token. Right, so we extract those and store them in the struct token now. And if we run it again, yes, you can see a struct test s has an ID of type integer and a name of type string. So that's the parsing of it. Now we have to create the AST. 
That was the easy part. Can you believe it? We just did the easy part. Hmm. Right. So the AST of a struct. Let's go to AST and define a struct.header because I'm tired and I don't want to redo things. We are going to include the primitive type and <clears throat> just change a couple of things. So first of all, you are a struct. Okay. You don't have a key. Your constructor is a struct and it has a std string id. You have a std a string id alongside with a std vector of define tokens called members. And uh, yeah, we have to include define like so and vector. Okay, we have to have the rest of the file. We need type gen, compile, prepare, has op, op generator, op type resolve, compatible, and cast gen. We do need all of those to be present. And yeah, so <clears throat> let's write the file here, the two ASD. So we include the struct ASD. And we return a new struct type and we pass it the ID that we have. We don't return it directly, we first capture that because we have to create our members. So for each of our members, and that members will get a define star from us. So D to ASTCC, right? So this way we, we pass this, create the AST from the token, and now we have to actually compile the token for ourselves. Okay. So let's go to the AST and create a struct.cpp. Include it. So, uh, just a, a call, you know, catch my breath. Do you guys think we should change anything in the streams? Uh, would you be interested in seeing anything different? Is everything okay? The editor, the color scheme. They are uh, talk, you know, you want to see anything different. Or is everything okay as is? Everything's fine to me, everything's okay so far. Okay, thank you guys. Right, so uh I'm going to start no. Doing it basically because there's no point to look at the problem. So we want to assign the ID based on the ID, and the constructor doesn't have a body. So there's that. Now, as for the let's just start with prepare. I think that's the easier one. And then compile. Right. So uh void extract type prepare. So what we are going to do, we are going to call prepare on all of our members. Right? Members. Yep. 
Is that okay? I, I think we don't need to actually. Uh, I think this is fine. Thank you, Marcel. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm very passionate about the compiler that I'm working on. The project has been going on for two years. You can look at the repository and see that. And and even before that, I've been fiddling with the idea for a lot for a long time. This is actually my uh, third language that I'm implementing. One of them was a university project. The other one was for a company that I was working for. And this is the third one. The previous two versions are not released to the public. Right. Feel free to ask anything you want about C++. I'd be more than happy to discuss it. So I think here we don't need to do anything. Right? I think it's OK as it is. Um, yeah. This should be fine. Yeah. So I'm not going to call prepare on our members because they are just, uh, I'm using define only to capture what they have. Let's look at define for a second. Yeah, you're only going to capture the ID, type, and expression. You don't care about anything else. And if we call prepare, we are going to call it under type. Oh, I see a bug there. They're going to call it under type, and they're going to try to compile. And I just don't like that. There is a shell for our data for our data at this point. So I'm just gonna add a to do statement here and just leave it. Next, we have the same thing for our compile, but here we should make sure that the types are valid, right? So to do make sure types are valid and do I want anything here? Right. Uh, now for the type gen. So generating a struct types is is not hard. You just have to do a lot of things at once, right? So. I am going to create a void store here as the generated generated type, like so. And first of all, if generated type is available, just return it because it's a costly process, and I don't want to repeat it every time. Right? We just we, we, ideally we should do it once. So this is our memoization, right? Uh, right, that is correct. Next, I'm just trying to, to think and see if this is going to be any problem. This is, this is going to cause any problem for us or not. Yeah, that's fine. So uh, we should. I think the way LLVM handles it is by. You know what? We can cheat. We already implemented this once. We shouldn't try to resolve the the old problem. So, Wim node statements struct dot cpp right. So we have a type counter. We can ignore that for now. 
we create a members type and a type a v, v pointer okay we don't need a virtual pointer anymore mm. so we should do we should start by here we should create a struct type and then passing the members right I think this is actually for the interface so yeah this is for the interface because we are we are dealing with a global name including dollar sign we don't need to do that at the moment but yeah this is all this is all we have to do so we create members So we create a std vector called vector of LLVM type star. We call it memt. And I am going to include base.header and the LLVM context. Like so. Right. So we, we originally create a struct, then we try to type gen, and then we set body. And the reason why we, we do that first is for self-referencing structs, because those are a thing, and we should be able to handle them. And potentially, we should be able to handle them in the prepare function. But you know, not now. Not now. Uh, so. To create that, we do auto s is LLVM struct type create. We want the context, the context is here. We want the members, there they are. And we want a name which is ID. Now we want to generate the body. So for each member in our members, memty dot push underline back and uh, so uh, members. So m access the type to type gen and convert this to an LLVM type, right? So those are our members, and then we just have to call set body. So s dot set body uh, mem underline t, right? So ideally, that should be everything. Um, we are going to put a linker because I didn't remake the CMake. Now it should work. Oh. So return S and also generated type equals s so we should capture that and we should return that and we are missing some functions aren't we yeah we are missing has op op gen op type resolve and cast gen so let's do all of them at once because they are all empty at this point and a struct type with an empty presentation. Um, word, 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 a struct type with an empty. Yep, compatibility, a struct type, empty again. 
same thing goes for caston a struct type empty and empty right so we shouldn't get a link error anymore we do get a lot of warnings but that's fine okay let's compile this and i don't see it because it's not used anywhere but just because um, so i think there's a function called dump type yes there's a dump uh, function so we're going to call that just to see how it is generated Undefined reference to LLVM type dump. Uh, okay, give me a second. I want to do something else first, and then we can deal with that. So this should this should create a macro that jumps here, return zero, add a to do, goes down, and then repeat that. Okay 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 and okay that's better now we won't get the warnings anymore and as for the dump so i i'm guessing we have to include something in our cmake to allow dump to work i just don't know what it is um so let's make it again and search the error Doesn't matter. Invalid conversion from okay. Compatibility incompatible. Everything is incompatible. Type and this is false. Right. Compile. Okay. Undefined reference to LLVM type dump const. Okay, we are just going to copy that and we are going to search it together to find a solution. I don't know if you can see the screen. Yeah, you can. All right. ASM writer. Right. So we can include the ASM writer in our CMA. Um, not this one, source.cmake, this one. ASM writer. Uh, it is not included now, so we can add it to the list of the modules. Compile. Compile, cannot find ASM writer. Okay, uh, so it is probably. Let's see what LLVM modules I have. So it it should be something writer, probably. Um, So it should either be native writer, it's not that. Maybe it is x68 ASM writer, not that. So you know what? Let's grab ASM writer. Oh, seriously, it doesn't exist. Okay. That is very bizarre. Let's see where is it in LVM eleven. Okay. Um, no. I 
at least let's look at something that's more that's newer like let's see Elysium 7 Mm. Okay, you know what? You know what? I think we can we can ignore that. Um, we have the ASM parser, and we have the code. So I'll be right back. Someone's at my door. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so, right, where were we? Uh, dump, right. Uh, so I want to add dump just to see this type. But I think we can uh, we can find another. Oh, let me just close my editor. I think we can find a workaround for that. So instead of doing that, we can probably. Um, Let's regenerate C and again. So we can probably uh, we can probably use the module, the LLVM module to deal with that. So yeah, let's close this one. Bring this over. So LLVM module things. Right. You know what? There is a there is a file. There's a dump. There's a C file that we can probably include. And that potentially has the thing that we are looking for. Since this is a test and there's no other way to test it, I'm just going to do that. So if we include LLVM dash C, and then there is, uh, I think, I don't know what file it is in, but I think there's a uh, debug info, right? No. Maybe beat writer. I don't know which one it is. So let's include this one. And uh, we have a dump type. LLVM. Dump. I don't know. Let's let's keep moving. Let's let's keep going forward. Uh, this is becoming ridiculous. So. So at this point, we have to register ourselves with the compiler, uh, and the compiler does that via the named instance in the base, right? We have a named function somewhere. Yeah, right. So it has a type ID, a type, and an look. And uh, we can define ourselves as something that only has a type. So here we are going to say um, cc dot seriously. What is it called? Register name, right? CC dot register 
name ourselves and a named instance. And we define the named instance via name like that. And so the ID is our ID. The type is ourself and the uh, alloca is zero at this point. Include name.h. Right. So we do that. Uh, it is this, not self. This is C++, not Python. Right. So we do that, and uh, we should probably do check for name clashes. Right. And yeah. Next step here, uh, we want to look up our ID and set the alloca to S. Right. So this way we have registered ourselves with the compiler and now we should be able to say uh, well let's let's copy this file as test three and empty this out. So we should be able to say T is a test struct. So we should be able to say that. And I think uh, we're going to get the parser error because it expects a type and it's seeing an ID and it doesn't know how to deal with that, but that's okay. So compile. Right. It is compiled and uh, we can run it. It did work. It doesn't know how to deal with main because it, can, it can't parse it, right? So to handle that, we need to create another type, another parser. So source parser, we're going to say name type parser. This is, this is our name. And we include, you know what? We can copy everything in. No. Uh, let's copy everything in primitive type parser. We have an ID parser that we are interested in. We have a steady a string type ID that we are also going to use here. Right? Description to AST, that's fine. Uh, it should be name type token and this should be name type parser. Okay, so that's our parser. We are going to register it uh, here in the C version. We have to be careful to put it after all of the other type parsers, though. Otherwise, uh, integer and everything else are going to be recognized as a name type parser, which is not what we want, basically. So uh, the type rule here, we're going to see if we have a name type after we've tried everything else. So when we expect a type, we first look for, for a primitive, then we look for a pointer, then we look for a function. Lastly, we look for a name type parser. And why don't you know it? Let's remove these. 
Uh, we have a typo here. That's why. Yes. So that's all. Now, uh, as for the implementation, you have a private ID parser called IDP, and that's it. You don't have anything else. Right. So let's define the scheme. So we have the way we parse everything here is by looking at So we ask IDP to parse for us. And if it didn't find anything, we're just gonna return it. You know, we're just gonna return it for now. And then we are coming back and uh, improve that. Okay, I forgot to do CMake again. Right. That's better. So now we have our name type parser. Um, okay. So it did parse it, but it, it, it created, it resulted in an error where it tried to generate the code. And I know exactly why, because it is treating the type as a variable. We are dealing with an ID token here. Let's just capture that as it is. Cast it to an ID token. Um, oh, right, 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 right. The ID token is down here, right, sorry. Never mind. Um, so. We want to return a parse result with a new name type token. The ID comes from the ID parser inside ants that token that ID. CC comes from here. Source comes from here. We can get the starting position from ants and the ending position from ants as well. Right? Right. Let's clean that up. Uh, I need to increase the brightness of my screen. Okay. So, ID token, not ID parser, sorry. This stream has been up for four hours. I am leaving now to watch a movie. Congratulations on the progress so far. See ya. Have fun, Marcel. Enjoy. Enjoy your movie. Right. So, what are you complaining about? Uh, name type token. Oh, right. Why are they in the reverse order? Okay. So that's okay. Uh, we fixed that. Now we have to write the implementation for this one, which is relatively easy to do. So we say name type token, the constructor takes these as its input and sets type ID and everything else like so. Now, for the string, for the description, we, we're just going to return our ID 
uh, description just return the id uh, sorry return type id and as for the ast to ast cc cc return zero for now because we don't know how to parse that how to, we don't have an AST representation for that, right? So compile that. It gives us no compilation error. And if we run it, here we should see, yeah, we have a test S as for the type. Before we had ID test S. So it is using the correct thing here. But now we have to actually implement the AST. So I'm going to say name type that header. And it isn't anything uh, complex. We're just going to include the struct that header here. Change the name to name type. And here as well, we don't have any members anymore. We don't have a generated type, but we have a resolve type. Right. And here, I want you to include that file and return a new name type the type ID that I gave you, right? So yeah, that's what we expect to see. And uh, yeah, but the name type isn't that hard to deal with, right? We just have to find the, the original type in the in the compile function, and then do everything from there. Is that right? That is right. Okay, so uh, let's go and implement that. We create the name type that cpp. Let's include our definition. So one by one. One by one. Name type the constructor. Assigns the ID and doesn't need the body. As for the prepare, so um, let's go to the struct implementation. We are creating the named instance in the compile. Can we do that in prepare? We probably can. Yes. But we don't want to do anything there. We want to do little things in our compile function. Here we are going to Ask, ask the ask the compiler to look up our ID, and um, you need to have base here, I assume. Yes. And uh, something else that I'm going to change. I'm going to change the name. No, not name type. Name dot header. I'm going to add a boolean with name is type, which by default is false, but here we are going to set it to true because currently the only type that we have is a struct, right? Yeah. So capture that, and if, so, right, if there was no name for 
if name dot is type was false, I want you to produce an error. DC dot debug none. ID is not a type. Okay. And exit forcefully. So that's that's our type resolve. And now we can say resolve type is what do you call it? Name dot type. You can see we, we capture that here. Okay. So that's that. And for all other things, for all other functions, you're just gonna call on resolve type. So type gen. We are going we are going to call return resolve type type gen PC. Right. Resolve type is not void, it is a type. There. Now, next we have has op we are going to call return uh, what should it be resolve type has op cc op address This is, of course, on name type. Right? And then we do that for everything else. So, void star name type opgen cc std string uh, op. So, expression. No. Wait a second. So, we get expression star lhs. We get a std a string op and we get expression star rhs and then we return resolve type the generates cc lhs op and rhs right so we have to do that three more times let's just copy these create a macro um go to the first white space Go right, delete the word, insert named type, colon, colon, paste what you deleted, go to a new line, write return, resolve type, arrow, paste what you deleted, and then semicolon, go up, remove that. Open brackets, remove that, go down, close brackets, go up, format that, jump to the semicolon, open up, right, PC. Go down, go down, go to the start, go to the first word, and that's it. So run that macro. Okay, also run that macro. So here we also have to pass E and here we also we only need to pass T and we need to pass OP and other chess here. Right. I wish I have done that earlier. Okay, so this is the name type and that's all we have to do, right? So let's generate the CMake file and let's compile. Uh, and they'll right. This should be standard dot end line. Compile again. Build target through me and finish compilation. Right. Let's run it. 
we can see the struct has the correct type and it is being allocated correctly. Okay, folks, that's it for today. I am going to commit everything. And we are going to resume this tomorrow. I added a, uh, a schedule for the streams. Uh, you can look it up today. I'm going to update it as we go. And uh, thank you for being here today and helping me develop our compiler. Uh, don't forget to check out the compiler code and the documentation for it. And yeah, see you guys later. Oh, thank you, Vertex, for following me. I didn't see that. I appreciate you following me here. For some reason, I didn't get a notification. But thank you. Okay, folks, uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.